Too, I guess. Today, we finally get to work on our 80 Ford service truck. There's a lot of cars out there that need rescuing, and we got the support vehicle to help us with that process. Unfortunately, she needs some help. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to yard the engine transmission out of here, swap the 400 motor smog motor with a 460 big block ford put that in here as well as refurbish the transmission that came with the 460 it came with a package deal and we'll also be doing some brakes and electrical and a whole bunch of other fun stuff in the meantime i'll try to organize it a little bit better than i did on the toyota for you guys so a little bit easier to follow along it'll probably take a couple episodes or several episodes to get this thing going but i think it's going to be fantastic and i'll put a link down in the description so you guys can hear this thing if you've never heard it run before. Uh, there is a Will It Start video. I'll link it down below so you guys can review it at your pleasure later. So, let's get to work. Right. <laughs> Ooga dooga time. Four extracted. Only three more to go. Let me show you guys what's going on with my carriage bolts here. You may have to do this too. This is just for anybody who, for the one person who actually might be genuinely interested. This is the real carriage bolt, and on top of it, you have a facade on here, right? It's just a little cap that goes right on there. Now, normally with these carriage bolts, you can just extract them, undo the nut on the one side, because Right beneath the head, it's a square, and right beneath here is also a square. So in theory, that's how the carriage bolt locks. Well, as you can see, mine was all goobered up and loose already, and it just it just stripped out of its hole. Which means you have to take your vice grips and grab it like thusly, right, to hold it just like that on this side. Then you unscrew it on the other side. Now I had to use heat on mine. So just make sure when you're doing this, you pull this, you got these chrome facades, make sure you pull them off first, then you can get to the real bolt. That's a cheap, cheap design in my opinion, but probably put stainless ones in there when we throw it all back together. So right now, let's go out where I'm trying to extract this facade off and See if we can mangle this thing off so we can get to the real carriage bolt underneath it. Right now I'm just using a combination of picks and vice grips and hooks to see if I can peel that thing off. So I don't have a good way of extracting these the first time I've done it, but we'll get it off. Now obviously if you guys do this, remember you're probably gonna scrape your bumper up and whatnot. So if you got a showroom pickup, you know, you may have to uh, Figure out a different way of not scratching her bumper up. This old girl, she's just a service rig, so I'm not too terribly worried about a few nicks and dings here. So, just friendly FYI. 
If your pickup's a lot shinier than mine, you may have to be more dainty about it. There we go. So I just squeezed it, pushed it out, I was able to get up my hook behind it. There you go. And that's where the real carriage bolt is. Brilliant. All right. Here we go. Oh, let me get my big self up here. Ah. Hey. Bumper off. Oh. All right, well, I got the water drain down below. Let's go ahead and pull the radiator out so we can get all to all of our brackets here for the radiator core support and the front end. So, let's pull the fan shroud off first. All right, like thusly. Oh, fine, we'll pull the radiator out first. Whatever. That's fine. That's a big radiator. Hi! All right, fan shroud out. All right, so the next step, I'm pulling the front end out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bracket on this corner and remove the bracket on this corner. Bracket there. Another bracket. Off. Okay, two there's done. Oh yeah, same two bolts, just mirrored, right, right here, right here. Off. Okay. Now we get to the bottom, we got a couple from the bottom that we're gonna have to extract, that one and that one, plus the main radiator core support bolts. And looks like this middle support bracket as well. And same thing, bolt, couple nuts from the bottom. Can't really see it on this side. And this thing, this uh, whole thing should be about ready to pop out. Well, what is it, 13? No, nine, 10 mils, 10 millimeter. Oh my goodness. That's why I hate these arrow pickups. Half of them are standard, half of it's metric. I don't care if it's metric or standard, just keep it one and the same. All standard or all metric, please. I guess we can't have good things. Not on this channel. Ha! Oh, she's getting right loose now. So all that's left is pretty much the bottom. Voila. Gas. Ah. 
Where'd my breaker bar at? I got the transmission hoses. Mm. Okay, so we have got most of the motor stripped down, carburetors off, point, uh, plugs are off, wires and um, fuel pumpage and power steering has all been disconnected. So besides the two motor mounts up top, we're done up here. Now we need to go down below, start disconnecting uh, drive line, drain all the oils out of the transmission and the engine as well as exhaust manifold, exhaust, correction exhaust pipes need to come off as well. So, down to the first floor to continuing disassembly. Oh, I love these, these are always a mess. Especially with no drain holes. Oh, oh my pan's barely big enough. Yeah, that's gonna get quite messy. Hello? Start dropping your fluid, please. Oh, good. I will get a pry bar, a thump thump. Oh, yeah. I'll just let it sit there. Try to ooze itself out for a little bit. Hey! Well, that works too, I guess. I hate doing this. Guys, when you ever pull these pans off, just go buy one with a hole in it, please. Just gets so icky otherwise. Cool, now I got a nice little Exxon Valdez going on here. Huh, I think I gotta go get some cat litter on that right away. I give enough clearance. Hey, look at that. Maybe. I spoke too soon. Off. Oh. Hello? Well. There we go. Yeet. Okay. Oh, I just want to cut off. Wasn't bad at all. Oh, hey! Off. Oh. 
That's nice. Well. Goody. All right. Out you get. Please. All right. Huh. That's what I got to do the drive line next day. Eh? Dropping drive line. Ugh. Removing e joints to drop said drive line. Whatever. Ugh, off. Okay. There we go, we're over there. Put this back in so I don't forget, because these things will get lost, I guarantee you. All right. Now for mid uh, carrier bearing. I was gonna say midship bearing, but that's a boat. Although this is technically big enough to be a boat. Down and out. Down and out. Wow. snapped. I'll have both of those off. Whatever. I do recommend if you guys can get yourselves an engine leveler. That's what this thing is. Basically it moves your pickup point to the back or to the front. So if you're lifting a transmission like I am, it doesn't go nose down. Now what? want to roll over like this. Come over this way a little bit. The real estate's this way. Come on. Okay, so with all that knocking that this thing did, and all the sleds that came out, let's go ahead and pop this oil pan off and just see how nasty it is in there, yes? Okay, so... That's the oil pan. So you can see, it's it's got some sludge, but remind you, it's late spring, early summer here. So what once was sludge is now semi-flowable. You know, as oil gets warmer, it's thinner and it runs. So it's, it's not too bad, but <laughs> it doesn't look all that great at the bottom you got some white streaked in that's still moisture in there so on the all yeah it's not looking all that great the bottom of the engine though honestly it doesn't look terrible the guy did do his oil change there's not a whole bunch of sludge over this guy though maybe that's where our knocking's coming from Quite possibly. Maybe this is where knocking was coming from. Well, let's take a couple of the main caps off. Let's take a couple of the 
connecting rod caps off and see what those bearings will look like. I'm kind of curious. Not bad. Starting to see some of that copper. I think it's copper. There's so many layers on this thing, like I said, I get messed up. Starting to get a little wearing a little thin right there. That's it's 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 not it's not as bad as what the Toyota was. Let's pull one more off. Ooh. So on the next one that I pulled, it's showing a lot more copper. Plus, are you feeling groovy? <laughs> it's got two heavily scored uh, lines coming through here. So, yeah, it's this is definitely a worn out motor. She's definitely a high mileage, well over 200,000. I'd say probably close to 300,000 just by the odometer and this guy was the second owner. It's um, it definitely did its share of work, but she's plum worn out. As for the oil pickup screen, honestly, it doesn't look that bad right now. I can see there is junk off to the left, right about there. There is something. There is chunks there. It doesn't look all that great, to be honest, but. Like I said, now that it's warmer, that sludge can turn to liquid and actually move. So, all in all, it's time to retire this motor and upgrade this truck to a big block. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub the engine bay down. The reason why is because I want to get to these engine perches. There's some rivets that I have to cut off with a cutting torch. So we're gonna clean this up. I'm just gonna do a little bit of scraping and then some power washing. We should be good to go to uh, pull them perches off and I'll show you guys uh, the new ones. Well, what have we got? We got a nice clean engine bay now. Got her scrubbed up, even got the hood scrubbed up. Fenders, got it all shined up. I'll show you the re original reason why I wanted to wash it, other than tidiness. These are the 400 engine perches. So we're installing a Ford Big Block 460. The perches are a little different. Let me go get those and I'll show you. So these are the new perches. Here. And here. Okay. These are for the 460 only. I was extremely fortunate to buy the engine donor engine and mating transmission from well we'll call him mr j for anonymity's sake but he does have a link to this video and this channel and he is watching this so thank you very much mr j uh you really gave me a good package deal i, I paid for it guys it wasn't a don it wasn't donor i had to buy it but it was a good package deal so he wanted to do a 460 swap as well as i did 
Well, unfortunately, he couldn't, so I was able to buy it off now, of him. If you only have the 400 and you're converting it to a 460, you can buy the adapter plates. They're a couple hundred dollars, not cheap, but you can simply adapt this to a Ford 460 so all your transmission stuff in the back will all button up right up, no problem. However, with my donor engine, I was a, he actually had the 460, and then they only bolt up to the 460 on the bull noses, these ones do. Uh, I was extremely fortunate to be able to actually have these, so all we gotta do is rip out the old purchase, bolt up the new purchase in, and it's just regular uh, engine mounts. Because, if you wanted to learn a little bit of history, the early 80s, they were still running the 400 smog motor before Ford finally ditched it. And I think it's 84, 85, 86. It's only like three years of these last, the basically the last bull noses that came out. We were really blessed by Ford that they actually put the 460 back in, which means if you guys can find the purchase, you can actually just bolt this uh, swap a 400 out and bolt up a 460. You don't have to do uh, tr uh, the transfer case or uh, your um, uh, your uh, transmission brackets. Everything is going to bolt straight up, not a problem. So if you guys can find the original purchase, that's the only way to go. But they, they, they make adapters too. So unfortunately, these purchases are riveted on here, 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 and here. So, just like this. So I've got four rivets that I need to get out. My gas cutting torch, of course, is out of gas, out of settling, so I need to go to the store and get that. So we'll probably come back when I've got gas and we're ready to get those rivets out. Do some engine mount swaps. And should be about done with this episode. All right. Finally got enough gas. We are going to go ahead and torch those rivets off now. I'm trying to set the pickup on fire. Come on, go out, shoo shoo. Still? Oh, come on, we got work to do. Maybe we'll just lop it off, eh? You finished? Oh, oh, yep, yeah, now it's out. <laughs> the other side. Ah. Ah. The other one is out. 460 perch going in. Okay. 
Now for the other side. I need for a two for one special. Here we go. Now we break out the Ugga Dugga and button all of this up. Finally got, finally got the 460 perches in. Fantastic. All right, so we've got the 460 perches in. Looking fabulous. Here's the rivets that I cut off. I, I don't know why Ford did this. I mean, obviously rivets are faster than screwing the bolts down, but kind of ridiculous in my opinion. All right, guys, before I let you go, I wanted to show you the donor motor that I have picked out and was able to purchase. I really like this mall because we have factory air conditioning, so we've got all the brackets and that all good stuff. I don't have to chase that down. Sometimes that can be really fun. It also has remotes for oil cooling. It did come, I believe it is a factory, oil cooler here for the engine. And for the valve cover, the valve train looks pretty good. It uh, definitely looks a lot better than the, the 400 that was in there, that's for sure. It looks, uh, looks all right. Looks all right. So with this engine, what we'll probably end up doing is going to tear it down. I know it's a low mileage motor, but I figured since it's out, replace all the gaskets, seals, and probably we'll do a light hone job and put new piston rings in it. We'll keep the pistons the same, but basically I want to refurbish this thing a little bit. It might as well since you're out because when I put it back in, I don't imagine to pull this engine out for a long, long time, I am hoping. So we're going to have a whole episode on... We're going to tear this motor down and refurbish it a little bit. And... There'll be an episode just on the transmission and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. So I don't know what episode's going to come next for the service rig, depending upon if the transmission part's coming first or if the engine part's coming first. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see uh, what my parts boys are going to uh, get their act together and get me some parts. So, anywho, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next episode for some more shenanigans. Number two extracted. We'll keep that bolt on there so this thing doesn't fall on my head. That's never been done before. Ah. Right. Really, I mean, Ford, come on. You should have done this a little bit better. All right, guys. And I'll put a link in this. I'll put a link in. I want my dainty gloves. Hold up. Slow production is slowed up. Now for the... Now... Oh, this is going to be a nice mess. Hold you. Hand is just not quite big enough. Send it mostly forward and hope for the best. Well, we've got a cat litter here. What have we got now? Get down to the bare bones, guys. We're getting there. Just hold on. I'm gonna prop you guys up some more so that light doesn't blind you. Woo! No pressure, he does. 
That wouldn't be right, no would it? Oh, what a wonderful day! Everything's going the wrong way. Nothing but problems. Whoa! Easy now. 